Welcome to Christian Answers for today. My name is Pastor Jeff Short, and I'm tackling a topic today about the evangelical commitment to biblical morality, and we're going to be looking at a situation that developed out at the training center, the Fuller Seminary, where I attended to earn a doctorate. Oh, about 10 or 15 years ago, I was able to take courses over the course of about three or four years and finish up a doctorate at Fuller Seminary out in California. That's Pasadena, California. And there is somewhat of a controversy over this uh, one professor out there who has taken a position in opposition to the biblical view of morality and he has been denied tenure, and he will be moving on after the end of this academic year, the 2015-2016 academic year. He'll be moving on because he has been denied tenure, and he is going then, I guess, to seek another institution that will grant him that as a faculty member. Now, what is it that he did, and what is the problem out there? This is very disappointing to me because, uh, like I said before, I'm a graduate of Fuller Seminary in Pasadena. It is a evangelical, Bible-believing, Christian, evangelical, Bible-believing Christian seminary, and it is not known in around the evangelical world as the most conservative Bible seminary in the country by any means, but it is conservative enough for most of us over its history since I think it started around the end of the 50s, beginning of the 60s, maybe 1960, maybe 59 or so. It could have been a little earlier than that, but it's been around for at least 50 years, and it has been known as an evangelical institution. It's trained many, many pastors, thousands of pastors over the years, Christian leaders, has a pretty solid reputation of being more or less conservative, Bible-believing, evangelical. But with this seminary professor who has written on the subject of homosexuality, he is taking a position of affirmation of homosexuality, and he's also publicly affirmed his agreement with gay, so-called gay marriage. And so that has caused a problem, which it should cause a problem on an evangelical Christian campus. Now, what actually happened? Well, what happened was that about a year or so ago, he wrote a book in which he states that he believes that a biblical case could possibly be made for same-sex relationships. So he's actually coming out and saying that he thinks that the Bible might actually accommodate something that has always been seen for the last 2,000 years of Christianity as wrong and as sinful, where the Bible has nothing positive to say about homosexuality and everything negative to say about it. This professor somehow can come to the conclusion in his writings that there could be possibly a strong biblical case for same-sex unions. So you can imagine some of the people associated with Fuller Seminary, namely certain professors, scratching their head and saying, how can this faculty member write such things and still maintain an evangelical, Bible-believing Christian position? And how can he continue teaching at a institution that actually has in its statement of faith that homosexuality, among other sins, is incompatible with Christianity? How can he then go on teaching in good conscience? How can he sign the statement of faith every year and still hold his own integrity? And so it evidently came to a head after the Supreme Court this last spring ruled for the legalization of so-called gay marriage in the United States, and this professor actually 
spoke publicly on campus at Fuller in agreement with the Supreme Court decision to legalize gay marriage. And so evidently what happened was a couple of senior faculty members then had a meeting with him and informed him that if he were to apply for tenure, tenure is basically a academic position where you are granted immunity from annual renewing of a contract, you're giving somewhat of a permanent status as a faculty member at an institution when you have tenure and you're able to have more freedom to publish and write without fear of your contract being uh, eliminated or non-renewed. And so he would have been in a position if he had gotten tenure to be able to basically write and say anything and there would not have been that normal review process for people on faculties who are not in tenure. And so a couple of the senior faculty members met with him and said that because of his views on homosexuality that are incompatible with the Bible and most importantly at that institution incompatible with the Fuller Seminary Statement of Faith, they could not recommend him if he were to apply for tenure, they would not be able to, in good conscience, recommend him for tenure. And evidently, these were some people who were in a position to influence that process, and he would not, therefore, get their vote or their, get their positive endorsement for his tenure, which would mean, essentially, that he would not be given tenure. And so that would pretty much limit his ability to advance at Fuller Seminary from, I think he's an associate professor or an assistant professor, to full professorship and other things like I mentioned. And so he would not be given a permanent status rather than the renewal of his contract every year, which is what the non-tenured professors have to go through. And so then what happens is that he tells people and informs Fuller that he would be leaving at the end of the 2015-2016 uh, academic year. So basically what he's saying is that since he is being denied tenure at Fuller Evangelical Seminary, that he will then take his teaching abilities and skills and talents to some other institution because he is being denied tenure at Fuller. And so that is the beginning of the end of this professor. His name is Daniel Kirk at the Evangelical Fuller Seminary. And But that is just the beginning of some of the things that I want to comment on because there's more to this story. And I want to ask the question, why did it take so long for Fuller Seminary to finally decide that they could not uh, continue on with this professor when his views were known for not just this last episode of when he proclaimed gay marriage is compatible with his views, but he's been writing and speaking about this for a couple of years and teaching at Fuller. Why wasn't it brought to light and dealt with earlier. So we'll talk more about that in the next episode of Christian Answers. Don't go away. Stay tuned. Well, welcome to part two of Christian Answers for today. My name is Pastor Jeff Short. We're dealing with an issue that occurred out in California at Pasadena Fuller Seminary, where as a professor at this Bible-believing conservative Christian seminary, has begun to publicly state that he is in favor of gay marriages, that he believes that Christians should affirm gay relationships, and he believes that the Supreme Court, this recent ruling that legalized gay marriage, he believes that was a correct decision. And so uh, he is now leaving the seminary, not right away. He's going to be teaching all this academic year. He's going to be teaching the rest of 2015, and he's going to be teaching the rest of the year uh, 2016, 
And then he said he's going to be leaving at the end of the academic year. Now, my question is, why didn't the seminary deal with this before when they knew that he was holding views that were incompatible with the Fuller Seminary Statement of Faith? The Statement of Faith basically says that homosexuality is incompatible with Christian morality. And the faculty members have to assent to the Statement of Faith. They have to agree with it in order to teach at Fuller Seminary. Now we can understand exactly why there, there are requirements that the uh, faculty have to agree with the Statement of Faith, because they are training the future pastors of America. Thousands and thousands of Christian leaders go through Fuller Seminary. I, for one, back in the early days of the 21st century, 20... 01 or 2002. Uh, I graduated in 2002, and I was aware of the fact that I was at supposedly the world's largest evangelical Christian seminary. And Fuller Seminary has a number of branch offices, they have a number of uh, extension courses, and so they're a huge seminary, and they train thousands and thousands of pastors and Christian leaders every year, and they've been doing that for over 50 years. So this is a highly influential institution in the biblical conservative Christian world. And to have a faculty member at Fuller Seminary teaching the future pastors and Christian leaders of America and around the world, I should mention, it's not just American pastors that go here, it is a institution that people come from all over the world to attend. And so here is a faculty member on the uh, faculty of Fuller Seminary teaching that homosexual unions are acceptable and that we should be affirming them and agreeing with the Supreme Court decision concerning gay marriage and promoting homosexuality on the faculty of a Bible-believing conservative evangelical seminary. And my question is, why did it take Fuller so long to come to the light to put some heat on this guy and to get him to move along and find another place to teach if he wants to or change his views into conformity with Christianity, Christian moral teachings? Now, the problem gets even worse is with the president of Fuller Seminary, uh, Mr. Mark, uh, Dr. Mark Laberton. He, to make things even more complicated, the president, Mark Laberton, endorsed Daniel Kirk's book in which Daniel Kirk states that there might be a biblical case for same-sex unions. So the president of Fuller Seminary actually gives a positive endorsement, a glowing endorsement for even the chapter on homosexuality in Kirk's book. And here's what he says about Kirk's book. He says, what makes this book exceptional is that Kirk addresses a complex and commonly felt set of controversial issues about Jesus, Paul, women, sexuality, and homosexuality, and does so in a particularly careful and unflinching way, demonstrating an interpretive manner that both honors Scripture and wrestles with it. So that's the president of Fuller Seminary saying that this faculty member who embraces homosexuality, who promotes homosexuality, who says that the Bible might actually contain an argument for same-sex unions. And here is the president of Fuller Seminary giving a glowing endorsement to that book. And this was a couple years ago. So what is this president of Fuller Seminary thinking? And why didn't he, as soon as he read and understood what was being said by a faculty member, why didn't he approach the faculty member and instead of giving a glowing endorsement to his book, actually sit down with him and say, look, your views on this moral issue 
are 180 degrees opposite of what Christianity has always taught and what this seminary as an institution holds in its statement of faith. And so there's an incompatibility here. You need to either re-examine and change your views on this moral issue, or you need to move along and find another institution that's more accommodating to your anti-Christian immoral views. That's what the president should have said. That's what the president should have done. And yet, instead of confronting this errant professor at Fuller Seminary, he gives a glowing endorsement of his book and even goes to the point in saying that this professor addresses a complex and commonly felt set of controversies about Jesus, Paul, women, sexuality, and homosexuality, and does so in a particularly careful, unflinching way, demonstrating an interpretive manner that both honors Scripture and wrestles with it. How can you honor Scripture when you contradict it? How can you honor Scripture when this man says in his book that a biblical case for homosexuality can be made? How does that honor Scripture? That contradicts Scripture. And the president of Fuller Seminary is right in the middle of this mess because he is the one who now has endorsed this book. And so he is basically an enabler of this professor. Instead of confronting the professor when he learns of this professor's anti-Christian views on morality, he affirms and enables him to continue teaching. So it, the whole controversy raises more questions than it actually answers. We do know, for one, that this professor has decided to leave Fuller Seminary. He decides to leave. It's not that Fuller Seminary has actually asked him to leave or that the president has asked him to leave, or some board of directors has asked him to leave. He has not been dismissed. He has not been laid off. He has decided himself that he is going to leave because he's not being granted tenure. Now, my question is, why is it that he, the professor, the errant professor, has to decide to leave? Why didn't Fuller ask him to leave years ago when people connected with Fuller, namely the president of, of Fuller, knew full well that he was holding these errant views. Why didn't that occur? Well, that's a problem, and we're going to talk more about it on the last and final segment of Christian Answers Don't Go Away. Well, welcome to the third and final segment of Christian Answers. We're talking about a controversy that was brewing out in Pasadena, California at Fuller Evangelical Seminary over the past summer, this past summer, over a professor who was holding and teaching and promoting an affirmative view of homosexuality, an affirmative view of same-sex marriage, all the while holding a position at Evangelical Bible-believing conservative Fuller Seminary. And the contradiction is totally apparent. It doesn't take rocket science to know that if you're teaching at a conservative evangelical seminary that trains pastors and Christian leaders in the evangelical world, now mind you, this is not a liberal seminary. This is not a Harvard Divinity School. This is not a Yale Divinity School. This is not Duke. This is not Union Theological Seminary. This isn't even a neo-Orthodox or sort of a middle of the road between conservative and liberal. This is a conservative, evangelical, Bible-believing Christian seminary, supposedly the world's biggest, the largest, with the most students, has a huge, tremendous influence in the Christian world. I attended about 15 years ago this seminary, and I got a doctorate in ministry, and I was impressed with 
the level of discussion and I was impressed with the facilities and I really enjoyed my time there. I was aware that it was not the most conservative evangelical seminary that I had attended. I got my Master of Divinity back in the 80s at a seminary uh, in Chicago, uh, Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. I graduated from Wheaton College for my undergraduate, so I'm aware of the different degrees of conservative evangelical Bible-believing institutions, and I I knew that Fuller was not the most conservative evangelical institution out there, but it was conservative enough, and it was Bible-believing and evangelical enough for me to feel that I could go there and actually uh, gain a great education in a Christian environment, and I did, and I was happy with it. Now, though, they're being challenged by faculty members out there who want to affirm the gay homosexual marriage issue, and that is something that is beyond the pale of orthodoxy, beyond the pale of Christian biblical uh, tolerance even. You cannot have a faculty member at a Bible-believing Christian seminary who is contradicting basic Christian morality. Now, one of the problems that I mentioned on the last segment was the president, the now president of Fuller Seminary, Mark Laberton, actually endorsed this professor, this Professor Kirk, uh, his professor, uh, his, his, he actually endorsed this professor's book where the professor states that a biblical argument for homosexuality can be made. And I raised the question, why didn't this man Mark Laberton confront him, Kirk, on his position and say, look, that is not a compatible Christian position to take. Certainly it's not a compatible position to take at an evangelical Bible-believing conservative Christian seminary. He didn't do that. Instead, he endorsed, positively endorsed this man's book and didn't say anything about the incompatibility. Well, evidently, this professor's writing and speaking was too much for a couple other faculty members who were, it says, senior faculty members, and they talked to this professor, Daniel Kirk, about it and said, if you come up and apply for tenure at Fuller here, we will not, we will not be able to endorse you because of your radical views, incompatible views on homosexuality. And so Kirk decides that at the end of this academic year, 2015-2016, he is going to be moving on and leaving Fuller Seminary, and he says he's disappointed with Fuller Seminary. Now, my question is, why wasn't this man immediately dismissed from his teaching position? What this means is this man has decided that he's going to leave. He's not being disciplined by Fuller. The president is not disciplining this man. The board of directors is not disciplining this man. He is not being asked to leave. He is allowed to decide when he's going to leave, and he's decided to leave at the end of this academic year, So, which means it won't even take effect until next year toward the end of the uh, winter and into the spring. So he's going to be teaching evangelical Christian students his false teachings, his false beliefs about homosexuality. And if you look at the, uh, the student guide uh, class catalog, he has taught Romans, the book of Romans. He has taught biblical interpretation on Romans and the New Testament. He's a New Testament scholar, in short. And so there are going to be hundreds and hundreds of students that take his classes at Fuller for this upcoming year. And he's going to be teaching them his heretical false doctrines. Now, why is Fuller Seminary allowing a false teacher to continue to teach at their school, continue to influence students, continue to contradict their own statement of faith, contradict the Bible, contradict the uniform teachings of Christianity for 2,000 years. Why are they allowing to continue? Why wasn't he given a three weeks notice to say, you are in violation of our statement of faith, 
and you are no longer allowed to teach at this seminary. Instead, they're allowing him to decide when he wants to leave, and so he's decided that he's going to stick around for another year and get paid for another year. Christian contributions are going to be paying this man's check every time he gets paid, and he's going to go on teaching heretical false teachings about morality that contradict the Bible and the institution at where he's teaching the statement of faith there. And he's going to be influencing future pastors and Christian leaders, and he's got a whole year now to be arguing his case to his students and to the faculty and anyone else who will listen at this school He's got a year to plead his case and talk about how unfair seminary was in not giving him tenure and how uh, he's disappointed and all this other stuff instead of being dismissed and given, you know, three, four weeks, maybe a month to get himself all organized and to be moving on. But Fuller lets him continue to teach, lets him continue to influence Christian students, parents sending their children, not their children, but their young adults, churches sending their future pastors to Fuller Seminary, and they're going to be taught by this man who does not even uh, hold to positions of morality that are compatible with the Bible and evangelical Christianity and even the seminary, and he's allowed to stick around for a whole year. Now, this doesn't make sense to me. He needs to be let go right away. He needs to be replaced by someone who holds to the Christian faith, and he needs to be uh, sent on his way. This is an example of a false prophet, a false teacher, and we need to not treat these people with the respect they don't deserve. They don't deserve respect. He is presuming to come into an evangelical Bible-believing institution and try to change it. And we need to say no to that kind of thing. We need to say no to heresy, and we need to let it be known in the strongest language that we don't put up with people who teach false doctrine in our churches. We don't put up with it in our seminaries. We don't put, put up with it in our institutions, that, especially those that influence others who will be leading the church in the future. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. We need to pray for that situation. We need to pray for Fuller Seminary and a lot of seminaries and a lot of Christian colleges because they're going to be facing this issue in the days and, and months and years ahead, and we need to be in prayer about it. Well, that's all we have for today. We'll see you back here next week on another edition of Christian Answers. God bless.